Good morning, Bukit Panjang Methodist Church. I am so glad to see you here this morning. You know, in Psalm 133, it says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard on the beard of Aaron, running down the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. You know, as we come together this morning, the unity of God's presence with us, God being so real in each one of our individual homes and in each one of our individual hearts. As we worship God together this morning, would you put your heart and your soul and participate together as from all the places in Singapore, as we worship the Lord together, let us lift high His name. Amen. Uh, shall we rise for the call to worship? Throughout the ages, disciples have said, I will follow you wherever you go. Lord, give us the freedom to follow you in the ways of love. We come from busy homes, filled with little time to consider Christ in our lives. Lord, give us the strength to follow you in the ways of peace. In times of struggle, we look to God for help. Lord, give us the opportunity to follow you in the ways of kindness. Today we celebrate the Holy Spirit, who shows us the joy of following God. Lord, give us the patience to follow you in the ways of faith. Amen. Fast as the ocean, loving kindness as the fly. When the prince of life, our answer, shed for us his precious blood. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the flood gates of God's mercy, flowed a vast and gracious tide.
is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I Strange and divine, I can say all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side, the Savior, He will stay. It has been paid for Jesus' blood and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus. For he has said that he will bring me home And day by day I know he will renew me Until I stand with joy before the throne To this I
of your purity Cause our faith to rest Cause our eyes to see Your majestic love and authority Words of power that can never fail Let the truth prevail over My brothers and sisters in Christ, if you are able, please remain standing as we continue our worship with the pastoral prayer. Let us pray. God our Father, we praise you, we thank you for this wonderful time that we can worship you at home during this COVID-19 situation. We thank you, O oh God, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who have used their talents and sacrificed their personal time to ensure that this worship service will be put in place for the live broadcast. We also thank you, O oh God, for protecting us and our family members from the COVID-19 virus. Merciful Father, forgive us that we have sinned against you in many, many ways. As we look back the days before the circuit breaker, forgive us for those days when we have taken the worship service for granted. During this circuit breaker, forgive us, O oh God, that we have lost our patience with our family members. If we have lost the control of our tongues and spoke unkind words to our family members, if we have been watching the worship service as though that we are watching a TV show, or if our attitude towards the online service is not pleasing and acceptable to you. O oh God, please forgive our sin. Have mercy upon us and pardon us, O oh God. Father God, as this world is going through this pandemic, have mercy upon us, O God, as we fight against this virus in various ways. We want to pray for the medical profession in every country who are fighting against this virus at the front line. Please continue to protect them and their family members from the virus. Strengthen them physically and emotionally. We ask you, O oh God, to grant wisdom to the medical scientists who are trying to produce a vaccine for this virus. We ask that, Lord, that you enable them to study the virus well and understand the nature of the virus. Please help them out, O oh God. Enable them, O oh God, to produce a suitable vaccine for this virus as soon as possible. Have mercy upon us, O God, and please hear our prayer. 
Lord, we also want to pray for ourselves during this circuit breaker. We want to pray for our children who are having their school holidays. Enable them to spend their time wisely. Enable them to be cooperative and understanding so that they will not cause distraction to their parents who are, who are working from home. And for those of us who are studying, we ask that, O oh God, that you will grant us the discipline to study hard and to finish our assignment on time. For those of us who are working from home, O oh God, grant us the wisdom and the strength to work from home. As we use various platforms and tools for our work, for our meeting, enable us, O oh God, to work effectively. Help us, O oh God, to observe rest when it is necessary. So that, Lord, that when others see what we have done, we can bring glory and honour to you. And most importantly, O oh God, help us to remember to spend time with you in prayer and in studying your word. And on this day, this special day, Lord, we want to remember our mothers who have loved us and who have sacrificed for us in many, many ways. As you remember the Mother's Day in this special situation, we want to pray for all mothers to be strong, to be healthy. We ask that Lord that you will grant them wisdom so that they can run their daily tasks well. For the Christian mothers, Lord, we want to pray that you enable them to live a godly life so that they can set good example, good Christian example to their children. We are grateful for this day, for today we can hear your word as a community of faith. As your servant Laiwa, bring forth your word to us, prepare our hearts to receive your word with joy. Enable us, O oh God, not to just to hear your word, but also to listen and apply your word into our life. Help us out, O oh God. This is our prayer. For all this we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people say, Amen. The scripture passage for today is taken from the book of Galatians. I'll be reading Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 25 from the English Standard Version. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I believe this is one of the very different Mother's Day that we experience. No restaurant food, no flowers. And for those of us from BPMC, we all miss the youth serving us with nice and interesting food, isn't it? If you are while we're watching this service, I would like to tell you as a church, we miss you. If you are with us this period, you would like, you will know that BPMC is going through a sermon series on the Holy Spirit. Last Sunday, Reverend Nick shared with us how the Holy Spirit leads us. Today, the sermon topic is bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In English, fruit has an implication of result, the outcome or the reward. For example, the fruit of your labor. Therefore, when we talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we are talking about the result of a life that is leading by the Holy Spirit or the evidence of a life that is walking with God. 
the evidence that you are led by the Holy Spirit is not in how busy your life is, how many church meetings you are attending, or what position you are serving in the church. 1 Corinthians 13 also tells us that it's, it's not based on the evidence that you are leading by the Holy Spirit. It's not based on how many miracles you perform, how many people you heal, or by how much money you donated to others. The evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life or the evidence that you are led by the Holy Spirit of walking with God is recorded in Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23 the fruit of the Holy Spirit the fruit of the Holy Spirit is the evidence of our discipleship the fruit of the Holy Spirit is the evidence of my walk and my relationship with God today I would like to share with you two main points the first main point is the three aspects of the Holy Spirit, of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And the second main point is how do we grow the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life? Let's go to the first main point. Three aspects of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The first aspect, it is internal. In verse 22 and 23, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such thing there is no law what does it mean against such thing there is no law well imagine a law against anger or a law against anxiety we know that it is not possible isn't it it is useless for a law to control such thing because law deals with action law deals with behavior law is a form of moral restraint so, for example, a well-enforced law can control stealing or robbery, but you cannot deal with the greed and the jealousy within us. A well-enforced law can deal with control murder, but cannot deal with the anger within us, which is the root of the problem. In other words, come to the root of our hearts, law is useless. The scripture tells us that the spirit goes where the law can't go. The spirit deals with the things the law can't deal with. Against such thing, there is no law. When the spirit of God comes into our life, it captivates us, it motivates us, and it transforms us from inside out. The spirit is able not only to deal with the messed up situation that we are facing, but also the messed up heart within us. A story was told, there are two boys, two brothers, little boy, who live in Australia. Whenever they misbehave, their father would punish them by uh, locking them up upstairs in their room to do their homework. And it was not a problem with the two boys because they will open their window of the room and climb down by the tree that is outside their window and off they went out to play. And this, it, and this had, it had been going on for a while until one day they heard their father told their mother that he is planning to chop off the fruit tree out there because it's not bearing any food. The two boys after lunch, ran out the house, went to the supermarket and bought two bags of apple home. In the night, they busy tying the apple on the tree. Next day, they heard their father screaming loudly and asked them to hurry down to, to look at the fruit tree. And they said, come and see, come and see. It's unbelievable. It's a miracle. There are so many apples hanging on our, on our pear trees. Ha ha ha. Now what we can learn from this story, I think two things. A pear tree has to bear pear fruits. The DNA, DNA of a Christian life is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. The other thing which I want to stress here is that don't spend time busy 
hanging fruits on the outside, it is useless. The fruit of the Spirit is internal, growing from the inside out. What does it mean practically? Think about how we raise our kid to be a moral person in Singapore. We tell our kids, you need to study hard so that you can earn a lot of money, so that you can be respected by others. We tell our kids, you don't mix around with people, that group of kids, because they will distract you from your study. We tell our kids, you are excused from doing housework so that you can focus on your study. And we tell our kids, if you are tired on Sunday, you don't need to go to church so that you can focus on your study. You see, the whole orientation of our child raising is on study hard so that others will respect you. Imagine the amount of stress our kids are experiencing. Even when we teach them to be a good person, we say, you, I don't want you to do this and this and this. Why? Because first, you can be caught. You can be caught by your teacher. You can be caught by your police. You can be bought by me. And secondly, people will despise you. People will not respect you. See how we are helping our kids to be moral and good? We are making these kids moral and good by nurturing anxiety and insecurity, by instilling joylessness in their life, by focusing only on the moral behavior, not just by just hanging fruit on the outside. We are building moral behavior at the expense of inner peace and inner joy. Of course, I admit that when the kids are young, we should focus, we can only focus on the outside behavior. But as the kids grow up, we have to shift. We have to shift from outside to, the, to inside behavior. During this pandemic time, Dr. Go Wei Leong, chairman of HealthServe, in one of the interview, he asked a question, a very poignant question. As ritual and routines are taken away, how is faith expressed? As all these things taken away, how is your faith expressed? That will depend whether you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The second aspect of the fruit of the Spirit is that it comes all together. The nine characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit comes all together. If they are not growing together, they are not growing at all. The Bible tells us the fruit of the Spirit is. It doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit are. In verse 22, there's a single noun and a single verb. And then comes nine things. Very interesting, isn't it? I think Paul is deliberate here. He writes in this way because his understanding is that these traits are all interpenetrate to each other. They are interdependence of one another. You can't genuinely patient with people unless you are humble or you are meek. You can't be kind to people and be faithful with difficult people unless you have a lot of self-control. And how can you experience joy in your life if you do not have peace in your heart? These traits like, have to come together. If they're not all growing together, they are not there at all. The problem with us is that we don't think like that. We often treat the fruit of spirit like a buffet spread. We choose and pick what we want. We look at the list and say, I have this, I have this, I don't have this, I don't have this. Not too bad after all. For example, it is very typical that people who are gentle and kind, but not so bold, and they don't seem to have 
that faithfulness to keep to their biblical conviction. They are not good in confronting. And sometimes these people, the gentle and kind people, afraid of sharing the gospel with others. On the other hand, people who are bold and assertive, generally they are not, they are also, they are not uh, patient and they are not gentle. So the gentle and patient people say, at least I'm gentle and patient, even though I can't be faithful to my biblical conviction. And the bold and assertive people say, at least I'm faithful to the conviction God has given to me, even though I cannot be gentle to people. I think it's okay. La. I think this is a wrong biblical thinking. Because the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit is they are to be growing together let me show you uh, what I mean if your gentleness and patience is the fruit of the Spirit then you must be coming out from a heart so filled with God's love last Sunday Rabbi Lake shared with us the basis of the fruit of the basis of the Spirit given to us is based on the love relationship. So if gentle and patient is a fruit of the Spirit, then you must be coming from a heart that filled with God's love. And you must be so secure in His love. And therefore you can be bold because you are secure in God's love. And you will be a very courageous people because you are secure in His love. And you will be courageous to do what he has convicted you to do and confronting people if need to or sharing the gospel with people if need to. So if your gentleness and your kindness is not grown up from that kind of spiritual foundation, it is not fruit of the Spirit. It is your temperament sweetness. I think many of us have this sweetness too. We are quite gentle and kind people. And it's nice to have these people around, isn't it? But we can be covered in carrying out God's kingdom work, struggling in our discipleship journey to be faithful. On the other hand, if your boldness and your directness or assertiveness is not is, is coming out from a transformed heart of the spirit, from a secure heart in God's love. You will definitely also be loving and humble towards the people around you. If not, again, these traits are only from your temperament. It's not the fruit of the Spirit. These temperaments are good in many situations. It will be bold and directness. But at times, it can lead you to be arrogant. So the fruit of Spirit is, they are together. What that means, my friends, you are really only as spiritually mature as your weakest traits. Go to your weakest traits. That's the level of your spiritual maturity. Sorry, I have to tell you that, yeah, that is your spiritual maturity. Some of you are getting a little bit nervous. Let's move on. The third aspect of the fruit of Spirit is, is gradual. The first is internal. The second, that it comes all together. And the third, it gradual. The scripture say the fruit of the Spirit. And in verse 19, it said the acts of the sinful nature. So what's the difference between the acts and the fruit. The X is a, it comes immediately, it's an action. But fruits takes time to grow. Over a period of time, fruit comes slowly. During this COVID time, I, one of the good things is that I was, I'm able to have this uh, conversation, this Zoom time with my son, my second son who is overseas. So every day we, we talk. And this son of mine had been overseas for seven and eight years. 
So one day I popped the question, how have your parents changed through these years? And he answered, I think that has changed a lot. He is more gentle, he's more patient, and he is more listening. Oh, I praise God for that. My heart's filled with joy. That is the fruit of the Spirit, and you grow through the years. During this period, I know some of us feel this, that staying at home is very challenging. This is also the time when our discipleship gets tested. Like porcupine, when we are forced to get close to one another, we start to hurt each other. Let us give each other time to grow because this is a fruit of the Spirit. You need time to grow. It takes time to grow. It is often said that mothers is the thermostat at home, not a thermometer. You know what's the difference between a thermostat and a thermometer, right? A thermometer cannot control the temp temperature. You only can reflect the temperature of the room. A thermostat can control the temperature. You set the temperature of the room. So as mother, we set the spiritual atmosphere at home. So let's set our home as a God-loving, joyous, fun-loving, fruit-growing atmosphere. And this is something that I would like to encourage you to do today after the service. Gather together as a family and share two things. One, if you are a mom, share with your kids one thing you learned from this sermon. And number two, what character traits you are thankful for them. And how are they growing in this character? Don't use it as a teaching session. Don't have the but. Just be assuring and encouraging them. And if you are son or daughters or daughters, after the worship service, go and tell your mom what characteristic traits are you grateful about her? And what is the one thing you learned from today's sermon? <clears throat> Hope you will have a meaningful conversation this Mother's Day. The second main part I would like to share with you is how do we grow the fruit of the Spirit? The way to grow the fruit of the Spirit is not by positive thinking and not by sheer um, willpower, not even by focusing on the fruit of the Spirit because this will be like hanging fruit on the side, outside. The way to grow the fruit of spirit is by abiding in Christ, becoming more and more led by the spirit. Reverend Rick told us the abundance of the spirit filled life last week. In John 15, he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And he said, abide in me and my word abide in you, you will bear much fruits. In Galatians 5 verse 24 to 25, Paul laid down three climatic conditions in which we grow the fruit of the Spirit. In verse 24, he said, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passion and desire. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. So there are three conditions here. First climatic condition is belong to Christ. This is a very powerful statement concerning our faith. The essence of our faith is not so much a religion or not the do's and the don'ts. The essence of Christianity is a personal relationship with Christ who lived, suffered, died and raised, rose from the dead. I know you knew that but I need to ask you, what is the nature of your relationship with Jesus? What is the nature of your relationship with Jesus? The answer according to this passage is, we belong to Him. We belong to Him. In John 17, Jesus prayed, He said, those thou hast given to me, we are the people that God the Father has given to the Son. 
Paul further developed this idea in Ephesians, say that we are Christ's bride. Paul said also in Corinthians that you are not your own, you are bought with a price. So it is very important to understand that when we come to Christ, we are not our own, we belong to Christ. And because we belong to Him, obviously we cannot belong to anybody else. In other words, when we accept the fact that we belong to Christ, we are also acknowledging His Lordship, His control, He's the Master in my life. And it is fundamentally crucial to understand that it is on this very basis we come to Christ, we belong to Him. This is the first climatic condition. The second condition is crucify the flesh. Flesh here referring to our sinful nature. Coming to Jesus is not just having our sins to be forgiven and going back to our same old, same old self and doing the same old thing again and waiting to go to heaven. Coming to Jesus is much more than having a sin be forgiven. It's also to to develop a, the whole new attitude towards sin. No longer see sins as I used to see. The sinful nature is not just simply the part of your heart that makes you sin. Of course it is. But it's also the sinful nature is also the part of your heart that wants to go back under the law. The sinful nature is one thing to revert back to the old system, to use performance as your yardstick, to use performance as your identity, as your way of approaching God. I will not talk more on this point because I think the last few sermon we have already touched on this. The third climatic condition, first is belongs to Christ, second is that crucified the sinful nature. The third climatic condition in growing the fruit of the Spirit is that we need to live by the Spirit. Reverend Eric shared a verse that we are born again by the Holy Spirit. And since we are born again by the Holy Spirit, we also need to live in the Spirit. It is in the Spirit we live this new life. It is in the Spirit that we grow. And we are it is in the Spirit that we are empowered and it is in this fear of the Spirit that we live this Christian life. Therefore, understand how to operate by the Spirit and live in the Spirit should be our top priorities. The challenge to Christian today is not to do the right thing, but to do the right thing in the right way. How to operate in the Holy Spirit, my friend, is our top priorities. Living up the Christian life is not meant to be a burden. Even though we know that we need to carry our cross and there is hardship in Christian life. But the Bible also mentioned that the Christian life, is, there is the joy in the Holy Spirit, the liberty in the Spirit and the abundant life we can experience in Christ. Some of you may say, I come to Christ because I have problems and Christ solved my problem. But I don't really want to belong to Christ. I don't want to walk away from my sins. And I don't like all this spirit stuff. But the, spirit, the scripture says, a Christian is one who belongs to Christ. Have a new attitude towards sins and live by and in the Holy Spirit. Moreover, it is in this environment that the fruit of Spirit will grow. When I started this sermon, I mentioned about 1 Corinthians 13. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, where Paul said, If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Nothing. Listen carefully, Paul said nothing. This is utterly important for your life, yet it is understood by so few. 
It is possible to undertake the most sacrificial act for other people and still not pleasing God. Give away all your goods and your own life and still come to nothing in God's eyes. It's possible to be eulogized uh, by the world as the greatest philanthropist or the most devoted martyr and still not please God. Why? Because what pleased God is walking by the Spirit and being led by the Spirit and bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The way to grow is that I need to accept that I am no longer my own. I belong to Christ. I accept that I need to have a new attitude towards my sin. I accept that my areas of operation now is in tune with, in harmony with, and insensitive to the Holy Spirit. I accept that the only way to grow is to put in effort in nurturing the life of the Spirit, making it a top priorities in my life. If you are struggling with any of these three areas, belongs to Christ, crucified the sins, the sinful nature, and walking by the Spirit, I would like to, you to learn to, to surrender to God, to accept this fact and, and ask God to help you. And if you, are, you have accepted the above three condition in your life, my advice to you is just relax. It takes time to grow the fruits. Just continue to be faithful in keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. The fruit will come. So if the Lord has spoken to you today in any way, I will encourage you to surrender that area to God and ask Him to come and help you, to help you to accept the facts that you belong to Christ and tell Him that you are willing to develop a new attitude towards sins and tell Him that you want to learn how to live by the Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. Lord, I pray that you will help each one of us to learn how to, to let you to be the Lord in our life, to surrender each known area of our life that have not surrendered to you. Father, we also pray that you help us to develop a brand new attitude towards sins that we learn how to crucify our sinful nature lord i pray that you give us a heart to welcome the working of the holy spirit in our life to embrace the work of the spirit so that we can be in step with you so that we can develop the fruit of the spirit in our life god grant us the faithfulness to keep on keeping on doing that so that we can harvest the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, this is a reminder of the discussion question. You can use it after the service. On the right side is the QR code. You can scan in and fill in your response. You can also write your prayer request or any question you have regarding the Holy Spirit. Do it.
promise that sows the path of peace Turn our strivings into works of grace Breath of God, show Christ in all we do Holy Spirit from creation's birth Giving life to all that God has made Show your power once again on earth Cause your church to hunger for your way Praise the Lord. This morning for our offering, uh, we use the same method that we've been using over the last few weeks. There are two QR codes that we would um, show you. The first one is the general for the general fund. And this is where we are able to again put in using your bank app to scan and to pay. Uh, take your own account number and then you can key in the UEN number Make sure that it's being paid to Bukit Panjang Methodist Church. You key in the amount that you have pledged to God and then you send. Alright, so that's for the general fund. The second QR code that you have on your screens would be for the missions fund. Again, our missionaries are in need of funding. And so as you give to the missions fund what you've pledged to the Lord, or as God has convicted you to give something for the missions fund, then would you please scan the QR code for the missions fund uh, make sure that it's put in the UEN number if you need to and then make sure that it pays to Bukit Panjang Methodist Church then after that put in the amount that you are giving and then send if you are unable to do either one of these pay now methods these QR code methods um, don't worry you can also put write a check and you can send it in to Bukit Panjang Methodist Church you can mail it in we will pick it up from the office or if you cannot do any of these things would you just take an envelope put your offering or your pledge money into that envelope and then when we get to meet together again all right then you can bring that together and offer to the Lord this accumulated amount of money over this circuit breaker time today is also a special Sunday the woman's WSCS uh, Sunday. The WSCS has decided that they will take whatever second offering that the churches are giving to them and they'll give it directly to uh, MWS. You know that MWS, um, the 135 MWS is trying to raise money um, to, to fund a thousand needy families. So if you see that QR code on your screens for the WSCS Sunday, that QR code actually is the MWS QR code. So whatever you give to WSCS today, it will go directly to the MWS uh, Poor and Needy Fund. All right, give you a little bit of time for you to, to fill in your details. And then after that, we will sing the doxology together.
praise the Lord. We want to welcome you again to Bukit Panjang's online service. If you are new to us and you are joining us for the first time uh, online, we are so happy to see you. Uh, well, I can't see you, but I'm so glad that you have joined us. If you have joined us because a friend had given you the timing and then the, the YouTube account, uh, would you drop us a note? Uh, send a message to your friends say thank you for the service uh, and then some comments if you would like to we we know that we're not fully professional but we are doing our best to try and bring you our service so we are glad that you are with us this morning again if you are at home uh, if you have granddad parents siblings uh, including your pets around say welcome to them glad that they are here for the last one and a half hours together with us in the Bukit Panjang online service all right praise the Lord please be seated uh, blessed Mother's Day we are glad to again acknowledge the mothers in our midst if you are a mother uh, you're sitting at home I hope that you're not trying to prepare refreshments now uh, just sit where you are and everybody else in the family would you go to where the mother is and say thank you mom appreciate all that you have done for us for your self-sacrifice for your willingness to do so much for the family we will all be lost without you all right so we want to thank the mothers and we want to bless them for what they have done for us and with us that god we thank god literally for giving us mothers without which we will be quite lost all right the next announcement uh prayer meeting is this thursday uh again we are meeting together on zoom uh, the zoom id is there the password is there uh we know some of you have felt a little bit uncomfortable uh seeing the password there but we think that it's okay would you just come and join us and then um but when you please when you come in please identify yourself all right so that we know who you are we know that you are a member and we are able to allow you into our prayer meeting come together because as we pray together we are also seeking god god what are you, what is on your heart we want to pray what is on god's heart so that we are able to agree with him as we intercede for both ourselves our church and our country and of course the world around us all right so i'll see you there on thursday night uh, for prayer meeting the next announcement uh, the the pastoral team we have started uh pushing out a weekly devotion we will do this every we'll push it out every monday morning uh and each one of the past the english works pastoral team we will take turns to to bring you a devotion from the book of psalm uh, psalms and then uh, from there we would share some of our thoughts and we pray that it will be an encouragement to you and when you receive it uh, would you spend some time don't just read through it rush through it take some time read it and then after that send it to someone else whom you think uh, would appreciate a little bit of encouragement you have on your screen the the um the url for you to key in to get to this particular devotion all right if you don't get it on monday by monday afternoon uh, please check with your leaders again the next announcement is our care connect and additional care our cca you know when we came up with the acronym cca it was really co-curricular activity meaning that we do this alongside every other thing that we are doing you know in schools when they have their main subjects etc etc their co-curricular activities hold great weightage in their admission to other schools and the higher learnings all right so in church we want to have our co-curricular which is pastoral care for each other we want to care for one another we want to reach out to one another so besides just our usual ministry things of uh, attending service attending our men's ministry women's ministry uh, ladies ministry the, the seniors the youth we want to care alongside Side. and this care is not confined just to the leaders all right we are encouraging everyone to care for each other okay so you have if you have been in one of the ministry if you are in one of the ministries you would have been assigned someone to look out for you and someone that you can look out for okay someone should have contacted you and i'm asking everybody to be active in their calling that means they actually call you and say how are you all right and if so far if you have not received a phone call from anybody from Bukit Panjang Methodist Church can I ask that you please forgive us but then at the same time would you please drop Michael a note 
and say that you know it would be nice to have someone call me all right and then give us your contact number we will make arrangements to make sure that you are connected with someone else in Bukit Panjang Methodist Church all right we hope that we are able to extend care and of course we want to know how you are doing if you are not well could you please again reach out to us because we can't we can't read minds and we can't visit so we want we need you to take a little bit of effort tell us so that we are able to reach out to you all right the next announcement is that um we want to thank people who have been putting into the offering bag and uh some some of you may be doing e-giving to individuals that you feel why well, I, I think god is asking me to give this person some money to support this particular ministry and some of these ministries are, are not within our church now we have taken a policy because it's been quite difficult all right so we have taken a policy that we will not collect money for individuals within the church that means you cannot you cannot um, give put the money into the, the offering bag and say can you please help me to give to so and so all right we will not do that we will do our best to look for you and return the money to you uh, neither will we do this for organizations can you please help us to help me to give this money to whichever organization uh, Christian help and all that no we will not do that we will do our best to find you if you have put your contact details return the money to you and ask could you please do it yourself or if we cannot find the donor then all the money that is collected will be channeled to the general fund of our church which is not a bad thing but it may not be what you want all right so please if you intend to give to a specific person uh, or a specific organization uh, would you please do it yourself if you need help would you approach the pastors or the office and we will help direct for you that means tell you how to go about giving um, those offering that you want to them okay the next announcement is the MCS brand audit. Uh, this is phase two of their survey. MCS, the Methodist Church in Singapore, they're trying to find out uh, what do people think about them. And so they have asked that we allow uh, the churches, we have publicizing in our churches. This particular phase two, uh, they're trying to target those who are 45 years old and below. They want to know, or rather we want to know, what you think about the Methodist Church alright so if you are 45 years old and below would you please um, look at the e-bulletin and there's a URL that could you please help us uh, give us your opinion so that we are able to brand MCS the Methodist Church in Singapore that we can become more relevant to the people that we serve okay uh, the next announcement, the Methodist message, we have not been in church, right? Uh, the Methodist me message is available online. Um, you just go, go to that particular URL again. It is there for you in your e-bulletin. Uh, and then you are able to key in that, that URL and you are able to read the Methodist message. The Methodist message, as you know, is the is the the. the the magazine that comes out from the Methodist Church of Singapore and it contains uh, articles uh, from all the three different conferences right the, the Trinity annual conference the Emmanuel Tamil annual conference and the Chinese annual conference okay so please pick up your copy of the Methodist message online and be encouraged all right uh, lastly earlier on I said that this is Mother's Day we want to bless all our mothers and there is a video that our youth, our young people have created and um, would you sit back uh, and then watch this video. But before we do that, would we just pray for our mothers. Dear God, we thank you for our mothers. You have in your wisdom created mothers such that without them we would not be around. So God, in your wisdom, in your providence for us, we are blessed. Would you again Create, Lord, in them uh, a right heart that as they sacrifice, as they do many things, as they multitask, God, would you love them, love them through us. I pray for the, the, the fathers, Lord, would, would they love their wives so that they are able to support them well. We pray a blessing over them. We ask this in Jesus' most precious name, Lord. Amen. All right, would you sit back and just watch this video? There comes a day each year when we appreciate that person in our lives who has been tirelessly caring for us and who has given so much of themselves to to love us yeah and um i think i just want to say 
I love you, Mom. Hi, Mom. Thank you for being there when I never asked. Thank you for helping me get out of trouble whenever I fight with Spa and make peace at home. Thank you for working hard to be a good mom to me. Love you lot. Thanks for being such a loving and caring mother who takes care of me and Dawn. I wouldn't want anyone else to be my mom. Thank you for being the most awesome mommy. Thank you for being so patient and loving with me. Thank you for always being there for me and playing with me when I'm bored, especially during this period of time. Thank you for being someone I can always talk to and get counsel from. Thank you for your tender loving care and always being there supporting us, looking out for us and loving us. Happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you for always loving us and conditionally despite occasional disobedience and in our biggest inspiration in our life journey. You are the strongest woman we know and we love you very much. Yay! 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 <laughs> Happy Mother's Day! We love you and have a blessed Mother's Day. Happy 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 Mother's Day. Let us all stand together as we receive the blessing of the Lord this morning. Friends, would you go in peace, love and care for one another in Christ's name. And may God bless you with every gift needful for His work. May the Spirit grant you the willingness to risk yourself completely for the sake of the gospel. And may the love and the compassion and the hope and the faith of Jesus dwell richly within you till the time of His coming, both now and forevermore. Amen.